No, I guess I gave you more difficult questions. So, um, so question 14 is one of those questions where because you don't know the boost parameter, um, Lorentz transformation, it could work with uh, sufficient care and attention to detail. But what's more useful in questions like question 14 is this property, the Lorentz invariant. And the fact that um, when you calculate the Lorentz invariant, you can choose a convenient reference frame to calculate that in. And in fact, let me demonstrate that with one of the questions. I think uh, one of the questions that was requested was question 13. And um, this is easy enough that you don't have to do it using Lorentz invariant, but let me use this as a, as as the question to illustrate uh, use of Lorentz invariant in um, solving relative state dynamics question. So let me just copy this over here and set up my setup here. Yeah. Okay, so it says, um, remember the photo, which we properly haven't covered yet, <laughs> has no mass. Um, so according to energy momentum relationship, uh, this uh, can be actually turned around to make it look like a Lorentz invariant. <laughs> um, the photon energy is related to the momentum by this expression. So this is something that you have to keep in mind whenever you are dealing with massless particles. So you have this expression for relativistic energy, gamma mc squared, and relativistic momentum, gamma mv. And because of the presence of mass in these expressions, um, these are only valid for a, something that has mass. So when you're dealing with a particle that actually has no mass, mass m equals zero exactly, then you have to fall, on, uh, fall back on this relationship here. Um, uh, through the energy momentum relationship, which uh, continues to hold even when a particle has no mass. So the question says that a particle of mass initial of some mass initially at rest completely absorbs a photon. So a photon comes in, hits the particle, and then it doesn't really tell us a lot of information. It's telling us that the mass of the particle after the collision is 1.04 m. All right, I guess that's useful somehow. And uh, it's uh, leaving as unstated something that I think you should understand, which is that this uh, mass particle new particle that you have after absorption of the photon, it cannot be at rest. It must mo be moving with some, uh, some momentum in the original direction that the photon was initially traveling in. Because in this interaction, momentum is conserved. So if the photon was completely absorbed by this, then something has to carry on this momentum. And that would be the momentum of the new particle. So. I'll just to put that out there. That the question didn't say that explicitly, but that has to be the case. So it's asking, what was the energy of the incoming photon? Oh, yeah, and this is why it's important to hear. You can't simply say that the energy of the incoming photon was 0 0.04 mc squared, because um, if you say that, then that's ignoring the kinetic energy that this particle must have. So this is the rest energy of the new particle. So, so you know, all of this, it should not be correct. <laughs> so, um, so we need to work this through um, properly at in full, and then we will, uh, we will work out the answers to these questions, the energy of the incoming photon and the momentum of the resulting particle that's moving. So, <sighs> So the, so the law that you rely on in this uh, interaction is the same, same law that you use in almost any relative state dynamics question, which is the conservation of energy and momentum. 
um, or conservation of the four vector, uh, the four, the four momentum. So what I want to set up here is um, I want to set up my four momentum, the total four momentum before. And I want to say that that's equal to my total four momentum after. So my four momentum before, that's going to be, I'll, I guess for the uh, sake of compactness, I will just, uh, um, I'll just write it as one uh, four momentum vector, momentum four vector, but I'm uh, doing the sum of the momentum four vector of the photon and the momentum four vector of the massive particle. So the first component here should be the energy divided by C. So in case of photon, it'll be the photon energy divided by C. And in case of the particle that was at rest, it's gonna be mc squared divided by c, so just mc. So that's the energy component of the momentum four vector before collision, and the, the momentum component before collision will be the momentum of the photon, so p gamma. And plus, I, I guess I might as well write plus zero so that it's clear that it's sum. So p gamma plus zero. So that's equal to, Total um, total um, momentum four vector after the collision and absorption of the photon. So it should be. Um, think I haven't used the gamma yet, except as a symbolic representation of the photon. So I will say so after the collision, it's gonna be gamma, meaning gamma that's associated with the movement of this particle here times the mass, the rest mass of the particle, 1.04 m times uh, c squared divided by c, so just times c. So this is the energy component of the momentum four vector that describes the, the new particle of this mass after the collision. The momentum component will be, um, oh, that will just to be, yeah, well, uh, let me write out the expression. It's gonna be gamma 1.04 n um, v. And this is gonna be just equal to p gamma. So when everything is said and done, this will just be equal to momentum of the photon. So this can be treated in a couple different ways. Um, let, let me do some preliminary substitutions that'll make some things easier. Um, so I have this relationship between energy of the photon and its momentum. Let me substitute it in here so that I don't have um, extraneous unknowns that look like they're unknowns, but they're not really. So, you know, plugging this in, C's cancel out. So what I end up with here is P gamma. So it's really the momentum of the photon that I don't know. Uh, in on the left hand side, on the right hand side, I guess I don't know what gamma is, and I don't know what v is. Um, but uh, there's this handy relationship between gamma and v, which is that v is equal to c times the square root of one minus one over gamma squared. This you know comes from just the solving the expression for gamma. The gamma is one over square root of one minus v squared over c squared to solve this for v and you get you get that. Um, I could use that to eliminate v and have everything here in terms of gamma. Then what I effectively have is uh, two equations, you know, whenever you have vector equation, it's uh, however many components there are, that's uh, however many equations you have. So I have two equations, two unknowns. So I think I could uh, uh, solve through this uh, systematically you know, eliminating the gamma and I can solve for P gamma and uh, work out that way. Now, what I want to, or um, yeah, so eliminate gamma, solve for the, sorry, P gamma, that sounded a little confusing, M momentum of the photon and then work out that way. Um, what I want to explore is if I could use the Lorentz invariant instead. Um, I feel like I should be able to. You know, I probably can. Yeah, I, I think I can. 
And in fact, as I'm using the Lorentz invariant, I can use a little bit of a shortcut. So, let me, so if we've already done this problem using, you know, a system of basically two equations, equation one, equation two, and you did it systematically eliminating gamma and solving for momentum photon. That's great. That's kind of orthodox way to do it. Let me do a slightly fancier way that's uh, slightly more tricky, but I think it's a useful technique to be aware of. So this is what I'm going to compute. Uh, what I'm going to now compute is the dot product or the inner product of the four vector with itself. This is um, <laughs> this results in what we call the invariant interval uh, in the space-time language, and um, I'm going to do this calculation for the the four momentum before one, and I'll do the calculation for the four momentum after, and um, and when I do this calculation, both of those calculations should uh, result in the um, same answer. So I, I should be able to preserve this equality sign, get an equation, and solve for whatever remains. So let me write down the expression for the this inner product before a collision. So that's going to be the time component, p gamma plus mc squared minus the momentum component, uh, or the space component, p gamma squared. So that's uh, the calculation for before. Now, for the calculation of four momentum after, this is what I want to do. So I could do this calculation using the coordinates that I see here. But I want you to imagine this. Because, um, you know, if I do it that way, then I haven't really simplified anything. Uh, you know, I'm still going to have to go through the same ugly algebra that I would have to go through if I were solving for gamma. So I want you to imagine the reference the frame uh, S prime, which happens to be moving along with the, the, the new mass. Now, I don't know how fast this is moving. But I do know that in this uh, reference frame S prime, S, S prime, the time and space coordinate of my momentum for momentum is gonna be 1.04 mc energy, rest energy divided by c, and zero momentum. I know that's what my coordinates are in the S prime frame. Now, this is the assertion that I'll make. This quantity here, this is a Lorentz invariant, meaning it doesn't matter what reference frame I calculate this in, it's uh, going to give me the same value, same quantity. So whether I do this calculation in my original frame S, or if I do it in this reference frame, it's, the end result is the same value. Now, this calculation looks a lot simpler than the calculation involving these components. So I'm going to choose to do my calculation in the S prime frame. So when I do the calculation in S prime frame, it becomes the time coordinate squared, 1.04 mc squared minus zero. So that's it. That's my calculation. And this equality holds since uh, whether, so, you know, left-hand side is equal to right-hand side. And if I were doing the component by component, then I couldn't just shift to my reference frame the way I did. But because this particular equation only deals with the Lorentz invariant, I can shift my reference frame <laughs> without, without any consequences, without affecting this equality. So, That'll yield me, so in this final expression, all the references to gammas and Vs are gone. So I have one equation, one unknown, so I should be able to solve for it. Let's just finish up this algebra. Um, expanding out the first square, I have P gamma squared plus the cross terms, two P gamma MC plus the MC squared. Oh, sorry, I've been using lowercase m and uppercase m interchangeably. Hopefully that's not confusing anyone. 
<laughs> uh, minus p gamma square. Oh, I like seeing that because that cancels out the Pesky square term. So I think I'm gonna end up with a e expression that's linear in momentum of the photon. So that's equal to that thing squared, 1.04 squared, m squared, c squared. Um, yeah, I think I can just solve for this, uh, move this over. So I get minus m squared c squared, divide out by two uh, mc on both sides. So I have um, so let me simplify this uh, algebra here. So uh, I have p gamma momentum of the photon which is equal to uh, 1.04 squared minus 1. I'm factoring out mc. Um, 1.04 squared minus 1, and then mc, um, mc. So the um, if you want energy from here, you would uh, uh, multiply by c. So the answer for part a would be uh, 1.04 squared minus 1 times mc squared, uh, use capital M, <laughs> don't use lowercase m. Um, and the momentum that the resulting particle moves with, that should be the same as the photon momentum. So that would be uh, this thing divided by C. So just 1.04 squared minus one MC. So that's it. Um, so in this particular question, I guess it didn't really save me that much time. I think uh, if you just uh, solve for what gamma was and went through that way, you probably would have solved it in about the same amount of time. But I think when we get to particle physics um, and you see more examples of relativistic dynamics later, you will see certain examples of questions where this particular technique uh, enormously simplifies the kind of calculation that you have to do. So um, let me just plug in the numbers to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Um, so I think we should do still, um, hmm. what I'm thinking through is, I, I, I think uh, the chapter overviews are meant to be short anyway. So I think, uh, we will still have enough time to do chapter overview. So let me do that. Um, what? Oh, wait. Why are they saying it's wrong? Um, good thing I checked. What did I plug in wrong? Um, oh, I forgot to divide by two. <laughs> so <laughs> don't, don't be like me. Don't forget um, all the different factors here. So <laughs> divide by two, <laughs> divide by two, divide by two. <laughs> so let me try with that. Um, that's fine enough. Um, um, so, so yeah, let me do the uh, chapter overview. I think we might be, uh, when all that, everything said and done, we might be five minutes over. I think that'll be fine.